So let's bring attention and awareness to the body. Thinking about setting ourselves up physically in a stable and comfortable, upright position. So we keep our feet flat. And most importantly, we think about the back, trying to maintain a straight back and an upright and open torso. We keep our eyes gently closed or slightly open. so that enough light is coming in, so that we maintain alertness. Even as the body relaxes, the mind stays sharp and alert. Then we just look throughout the body and see if we need to Relax or release any places where there's unnecessary tension. Any stress that we're holding in the body. Just move throughout the major muscle groups. Thinking about Letting any tension dissolve and relaxing into this posture, letting the body just hang on itself. While continuing to maintain that stability, that sense of being upright under the body's own power, And then just feel as though you lose interest in sending out your attention to the room. Your awareness is contained just in the body and mind. And attend to the physical sensation. And the in-breath and the out-breath. In the area around the nostrils. Letting go again and again of whatever else arises in the mind that isn't that present moment physical sensation.
And then establish a broad and virtuous motivation for your time. Seeking to develop your good qualities and actualize your potential if possible, primarily on the basis of understanding how doing that allows you to be of the greatest benefit to other sentient beings. Thinking how all sentient beings are numberless. and the extent to which I can reduce my own confusion, my own suffering, and gain greater wisdom, greater clarity, deepen my spontaneous love and compassion, then the more wish-fulfilling I become for all sentient beings. Today we'll continue looking at these core delusions these painful confused states that give rise to our suffering and most importantly what are the antidotes We have to identify the problem very clearly, in great detail, so that we can recognize its arisal in daily life, but then also we have to understand what is it that we can do practically in the moment and over time to reduce our habituation. So the next state that we'll look at can be thought of in different ways. Sometimes it's translated as anger, sometimes hatred, sometimes aversion. Really, there is a spectrum of possibility here. In its full state, this delusion does involve a sort of malice, a wish or interest in causing some harm. That's the real, fully-fledged version. But then, of course, there are lighter aspects. When we feel a strong sense of wanting or needing obsessively to be separated from the unpleasant, So 
So we can bring to mind a few examples along this spectrum. We don't need to cause harm. We just need to have some interest, some thought that we're okay with a sentient being coming to harm. And it isn't necessarily a physical harm. It could be wounding in a, on a mental level. So we observe something that we find unpleasant, aversive, and then we strongly want to be separated from it, and perhaps in the more extreme cases we find ourselves developing feelings of animosity, of malice toward what we perceive as the cause, the external cause of that sort sense of aversion. Think about how the energy of this operates in your life. What are the sorts of situations that tend to give rise to this feeling? And when it does arise, how does it feel in the body and mind? How would you identify the arising of this state in your experience? And when it is dominant in the mind, what kinds of things do you say and do? Try to think about these questions.
And then think about what kinds of suffering you've experienced that you've created for yourself and also suffering that you've created for others. When this mind is dominant, we tend to give in to harsh words or divisive speech, even possibly physical or verbal abusive behavior can arise sometimes. So think of the ways in which this energy has created distance between you and other people. and how it isn't in keeping with a genuine interest in cultivating a state of genuine love and compassion that equally embraces all sentient beings. Just try to think about the suffering that it creates.
And then in terms of the antidotes, we can first think that as long as I am in ordinary cyclic existence, I will definitely be meeting with obstacles like this again and again. So each time I do, instead of giving rise to a mind of rejecting and creating aversion, I can see how I can use this to fuel my genuine and strong interest in overcoming cyclic existence, eliminating the cause of cyclic existence in my mind. If I don't react in that way, and if I do react, with a mind of anger, then I'll only create more suffering, more seeds in the mind to experience obstacles and difficulty. These obstacles are also a time when I can meditate on the law of karma and recognize that at some point in the past, this mind was associated with a different form and engaged in actions that laid the seeds of this experience. So we can start to try to take responsibility for changing the situation that we're in. We don't need to feel as though it is our fault, but we do need to feel as though it is, it is our responsibility. We are the only ones you can start to shift what we're experiencing. It's also a time to practice patience, to have a resolve to maintain a calm mind in the face of adversity, to seek a solution with a quiet determination rather than an exaggerated sense of aversion. And then we can think about compassion. If we feel that we're being harmed, think that the person that we feel might be harming us is creating negative karma while allowing us to finish the negative karma that we've already created. And that as long as the delusion that motivated their actions remain in their mind, they will continue to suffer. 
So to see them as an object of compassion. So make a determination, a resolve to try to learn more about these antidotes of renunciation, karma, patience, and compassion. To study them, to reflect on them, and to try to remember them when aversion arises. And then when you're ready, we'll come back together. And then we'll dedicate. So think about the virtuous intention or motivation that you established, and then the energy that you put into trying to understand the mind of Anger, hatred, aversion. And the insights that you gained and how it operates and what we can do about it. And then think, whatever positive energy I've created, I offer that for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception. May it ripen in the best way to support my own continued spiritual growth and development, to give me the tools and the abilities to be of greater and greater benefit to sentient beings. May it serve as a cause and condition to ripen in my enlightenment so that I can perfectly benefit sentient beings. And by practicing in this way, may any obstacles to the Guru's long life be completely pacified. May I and all other sentient beings come under the joyful care of the enlightened beings. And may they remain in the world to guide and protect me and all sentient beings until our swift enlightenment. Thank you.